Am I an ape? If you have ever gotten into an argument about human evolution online, you know what I'm talking about. You casually mention that humans aren't apes, or are distinct from apes, and suddenly you've got a whole tribe of people on your tail. You ignorant, unscientific rube, don't you understand that humans are apes? And while there are some very nice, well-meaning evolutionists, many of the people who use this argument are terminally online atheists who, let's face it, are just being pedantic to make themselves seem smarter. So today I'm going to talk about why it is perfectly legitimate to say that humans are not apes. My first point is that the word ape is not a scientific term. It's a common English word. It's believed to have come from Proto-Germanic, and it originally referred to monkeys and what we would now call apes both, to the exclusion of humans. Now, the introduction of the word monkey to the English language later changed the meaning of the word ape, and now they're thought to be mutually exclusive. So now we would say that apes are not monkeys, monkeys are not apes. These are two different categories. Now, since ape is a common English word, it does not need to follow the rules of scientific nomenclature. Nowadays, scientists have designed things so that the names of groups of animals are preferentially monophyletic. So what that means is that these group names apply to the common ancestor and all of the different descendants that it has. If we think of that from a creationist perspective, what that means is that this group name applies to all of the animals that are more similar to each other than they are to the outgroup, or the next most similar thing. But because ape is a common term, it does not need to follow this system. Instead, the word ape can refer to groups that are not monophyletic. In other words, they could include the ancestor, but not all of the descendants. Or they could just do some of the animals that are similar to each other compared to the outgroup, and not all of the animals that are most similar to each other. So that raises the question. This is a common English word. How is it used by the public? Because the use of a word kind of determines its meaning. And the public generally uses the word ape to refer to things like chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and gibbons. The public doesn't typically use the word ape to refer to humans, and you'll see that reflected in most dictionaries. So the public at large, then, is basically using the word in a way that these evolutionists don't like. These evolutionists want you to say non-human ape because that implies that humans are apes, so when you're referring to apes that are not human, you have to intentionally specify that you're excluding humans. So I think that the actual heart of this controversy is that evolutionists are conflating words. These atheists and evolutionists are conflating the word ape with a scientific term, and thus they're thinking that the word ape has to follow these rules of scientific nomenclature and can only properly be applied to monophyletic groups, meaning that it would need to apply to humans. So, to make this point more clear, let's quickly run through the scientific classification of humans. Now, when I was in school, I learned the Linnaean classification system using the moniker Kings Play Chess on Fine Glass Sets, or Kingdom Phylum Class Order Family Genus Species. Now we have a level above the kingdom called the Domain, and humans are in the domain Eukarya because we, our cells, have a nucleus and they have organelles that have a membrane surrounding them and that means that we can be called eukaryotes. Next, humans fall into the kingdom Animalia, and this describes how our bodies have symmetry and sides to them. We have a left side, we have a right side, we have a front, we have a back. It also refers to how we have different types of cell. We have hair cells, we have skin cells, we have heart cells, we have muscle cells, all of these different types of specialized cells in our body. And as a result, humans can be called animals in a scientific sense. Next, we are in the phylum Chordata, and this refers to how in embryonic development we have a rod that kind of runs down our back that later develops into our vertebrae called a notochord. And so, because of this, we can be called chordates. Humans fall in the class mammalia because we have hair, we are warm-blooded, females feed their young with milk, and so we are mammals. Next, we're in the order primata, distinguished by having fingernails instead of claws, and also our eyes, which face forward to the front of our head rather than out to the sides, so humans can thus be called primates. This order was named by Linnaeus, 
And that word primate actually comes from the Latin for first or primary. And that's because Linnaeus believed that humans are the pinnacle, the most important of God's creatures. Humans are in the superfamily Hominoidea, and the most obvious feature which unites this group is the lack of a tail. So humans are hominoids. We are classified in the family Hominidae by our large body size and our more flexible shoulders and wrists. So humans are hominids. And finally, we get to our genus, the genus Homo, distinguished by a very large brain compared to our body and the fact that we are habitually bipedal. Now, where was the word ape in that list? Did I forget to mention it? No, I didn't. The word ape doesn't show up in that list because the word ape is not the name of a scientific rank. The issue here is that people conflate the term ape with the scientific family Hominoidea. And hominoidea refers to humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and gibbons, right? So this is actually a monophyletic group. All of them are more similar to each other than they are to the outgroup, which in this case would be monkeys. So their argument is that since hominoidea is a monophyletic group, that the word ape, which includes many of the same animals that appear in hominoidea, should also refer to a monophyletic group. But once again, this is just the result of conflation. They're conflating two completely different words, one scientific and one common. So why does it really matter whether we call humans apes or not? Isn't it just a word? Like, why argue over definitions like this? Well, to answer that, I think we need to look at why atheists are so intent upon people referring to humans as apes. And I think the reason why here is because it invokes a very evocative image in people's minds. When people hear the word ape, they don't immediately think of their grandma or their dad or their sister, right? When people hear the word ape, they think of that big hairy animal they saw at the zoo. So by referring to people as apes, evolutionists are implicitly teaching this idea that humans are not unique. So there's simply no need to call humans apes. Most of the public doesn't do that anyway, and it carries with it certain wrong, negative connotations. It implies that humans are just another type of ape, which we're not. We are unique. We were created specifically by God to bring him glory, and he gave us his image, something that no other creature has. We are special. We are unique. We have unique physical features, but God also gave us these wonderful uh, mental and cognitive capacities that set us apart strikingly from other creatures. I think that it is actually quite helpful to have non-monophyletic group names in common English. It allows us to do several different things. First, it allows us to use non-wordy language. We don't have to say non-human hominoids or non-human apes. We can just say apes, which is a lot easier to remember. It also allows us to focus on particular features and to kind of classify things in a way that seems natural to our mind. So when the average person thinks of the differences between apes and humans, they're thinking of things like body hair, apes of long shaggy body hair. They're thinking apes climb in the trees, they're, they're acrobats, they're swinging around on their long arms. They are thinking of apes walking along on the ground on all fours. Apes, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, all share certain features which unite them. And evolutionists would refer to these as primitive features, but they set apes apart from humans. And so because of that, we have this natural gut reaction that these animals belong together. So to recap, the word ape is a common English word which refers to talus non-human primates. It is not necessarily synonymous with the taxonomic family hominoidea. Now you can use the word that way, it's a free country, I can't stop you. You can say that humans are apes. You can conflate the term ape with hominoidea. But what you cannot do is claim that you are somehow empirically correct or more accurate for using the word in a way in which it is not used at large. Publicly, the word ape is used to the exclusion of humans.